and welcome to the latest episode of our New Homes podcast. I'm Sonal from Redro and I'm here today at our Kingsmoke Garden Village in Cheshire. In today's episode, we'll be taking a look at the design of our homes, how they've evolved over the years and what people are looking for in their homes. I'm really pleased to be joined today by Design and Technical Director Stuart Norton. Hi, Stuart. Hi. Thank you for joining us. And also, um, we've got Emily Carey, our sales consultant from Woodford Garden Village. Hi, how are you? Hi, hi. So starting off with you, Stuart, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself, um, your expertise in the design and technical field? My responsibilities are down to um, all of the, looking after all of the house type portfolio. Mm -hmm. So all of the designs of our various collections that we've got. Um, I work closely with our commercial guys um, on specifications and so on. Uh, but everything that you see in a red row house, um, it, it, it comes down to, yeah, and my department. Great, thank you, Stuart. So um, over to you, Emily. I believe you're our sales consultant of the year, which is a fantastic achievement. Well done. Do you want to talk a bit more about what that entails and your role here at Redro? Yeah, thank you. So it was an amazing achievement to win that award this yeah. year. I was really, really pleased to win that. So my part um, of the team at Woodford Garden Village and the sales consultants there, we meet the customers, get their idea of what they're looking for, um, some of the bedrooms, if there's any designs they have already seen on the website. After they've answered those questions and what they are looking for, we can look at the different homes we offer, the designs of those homes and what would really suit them. So ultimately to try to find their dream home. Yeah. So Stuart, we're here at such a fantastic location and Kingsmoat is a beautiful site and we're blessed with the weather as well, of course. So can you tell us a bit more about where the inspiration came behind our homes? When I first started looking at this, we, we drew inspiration from the arts and crafts period. Um, it seemed the logical way to go ev everywhere that's, that you look, there's sort of arts and crafts properties. Yeah. So um, as far as the designs are concerned, if you imagine that you go out one day looking for a, for a house, you'd find the, the area that you'd want to be in, that, that sort of nice road in that in that area, nice leafy lane. Uh, you, you'd yeah. go down, find find the house that you wanted. It'd be some sort of period, probably arts and crafts, 1930s sort of style house. Uh, you'd buy it and then you'd basically knock the guts out of it and, and put in, in, put, put an open plan living into uh, into into the house. What what sort of um, the idea of our house is that you'd still get that interesting architecture, very varied styles throughout the range, uh, but you'd get that sort of modern uh, living space that everybody everybody wants yeah. within the house with, with little or no hassle. Great, thank you, Stuart. So would you say, Emily, this is what people are looking for when they search for a home and come to visit our sites? Yeah, definitely. I think people now are looking for that traditional house, so they want it to look, when they drive up and the street scene of the homes, they want them to look traditional. But internally, they are wanting a modern home that they don't have to really do anything to. So we do offer the 1930s arts and crafts inspired exterior. And then internally, as Stuart's mentioned, you can have it as modern as you would like with all the fixtures and fittings that we offer as well. So it's definitely something people are looking for alongside open and plan living, everyone is, is coming to that really in terms of what they're looking for. So during these last 18 months with people spending a lot more time at home, what would you both say um, people are looking for when it comes to the process of searching for a new home? Um, we are doing the home offices now as well. So in either a bedroom or a snug room or a study, we are offering the fitted home offices. So we do offer ultra fast broadband as standard. So from day one, when they collect their keys, they can move in and work from home straight yeah. away, which is great. But then they also have the separate areas if they want to break away and spend time with the family or just want some private space. So we do offer all of that as well. Yeah, so you've got multifunctional, yeah, multifunctional areas living. as well as flexibility for everyone to have their private space at the same time. Definitely, yeah. And we offer so many different house types as well. So if there's one house type that doesn't quite meet their needs, yeah. we will have another one as well because we offer so many different house types. So Emily, what are the sorts of general reactions when you're showing people around a show home uh, when they see open plan living and you know the light flooding in through the windows? Yeah, they definitely get the wow factor as soon as they walk in. So yeah. particularly um, towards the back of the houses where they have the big patio doors. So they let through a lot of natural light. So then it, it flows through into the garden, which yeah. is the fifth room of the home. So it is definitely something people are looking for. Um, they are definitely, like I say, wowed by it. And it yeah. is what 
we are seeing people look for when they come to the sales centres. So Stuart, how are we innovating that outdoor space and um, trying to make the most out of it? I think we've got the, 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 the opportunity there with um, uh, bifold doors going out into the garden, which is what, what, what people, people want to do. But I think we, we have taken it a step further now. Uh, and we've got sort of an offering of uh, garden rooms, which are, again are multifunctional. So whether you want to put your, your home office in there, whether you want to sort of uh, turn it into a, a gym with a peloton or, or whatever, yeah. there's that opportunity and the, the, the space to do that. And of course, it's nicely linked into your, um, into your house. Especially on a day like this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Fabulous, yeah. Those doors Any open. excuse, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, Emily, Stuart mentioned earlier about the fact that people are, you know, really trying their hardest to perfect their homes and create the ideal home by, even if it means ripping out the guts of a house. Um, how have you found customers finding the benefits of skipping the renovation process and buying new with us? Yeah, recently especially because I think people are noticing over the last 18 months how important the time that they have is to spend in the home but rather than ripping it out obviously with a retro house you have the externals of a 1930s arts and craft inspired home so the one where you go down the lane and you see but then internally it is modern and all done for you for the day that you collect the keys and um, so it's definitely something we are seeing more of now as well and people are realizing what's important so along with that as well as the costs so there is a slight premium on new builds but when you compare it the costs of ripping out the guts of an old home and also going forward as well with the energy efficiency in terms of your bills you will be spending less on those going forwards with it with a new build and yeah. retro home and going over a health and well-being point as well yeah the stress as well exactly yeah and especially if you are working from home you don't want to be working from home finishing it at whatever time and then going into the next room to do the works or somebody doing the works while you're working from home you just want to be able to finish have a nice home and yeah. go in go and relax in the living room or the family room. I think definitely recently people are realising that they want to spend more time out and about in nature rather than inside converting a house really. Yeah, I, I think as well the, the um, thermal efficiency of a new house is, is you're never going to get that off a, a refurbished um, property so um, yeah. you know from a, 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 a customer's bill perspective um, certainly in a new house, you're going to get lo a lot lower running costs. Yeah. And then overall costs of it as well, like Stuart says, if you are ripping or well, gutting a house, yeah, essentially. Yeah, there are nightmares that you hear about. Yeah, because I know there is a slight premium to buy a new house, but then because of that, we don't have, obviously, the costs afterwards. Yeah, and the added stress yeah. as well. And, and I think you, you never know what costs you're going to incur. You know, there's always the hidden costs as well. Mm, with, a, with It always a, adds up. Yeah. Yeah. That's brilliant, guys. Thank you so much. So before we head inside with Stuart and Emily to take a look at some of those design features that were discussed earlier, I just want to touch on our Recreate Retro competition, which we've just launched on social, which some of you might have seen, but no worries if not. Um, we're asking gamers of all ages to recreate a retro home digitally. So this could be in the format of Minecraft, Sims, um, Roblox, Animal Crossing, whatever it might be. Head over to our website, which is redro.co.uk slash recreate redro for more information on how to enter or tag us on social with hashtag recreate redro competition. The competition will be judged by a group of redro experts, including Stuart with us, as well as gaming influencer Claire Siobhan, which some of you might have also heard of. But um, whilst we've got Stuart with us today, why don't you tell us more of what you're looking for in some of the entries? OK, well, you, you might not guess it, but I'm not a not a big gamer. But uh, what, what I will be looking for um, in, in all of these is that uh, we as a, a, a company spend uh, a, a lot of time detailing and, and getting everything just right for, for our house type. So uh, we've got bay windows that allow more lighting. We've got gables that give a character. We put plinths on the houses so it gives the house a sort of uh, something to to sit upon so yeah. all these little bits of, of detail um, go into forming a, a red row house so um, our customers that, that enter 
the competition. It'll just be interesting to see how they um, utilise the format that they're going to do it and, and what they actually come up with to uh, for us. So uh, I'll look forward to it. Yeah, definitely looking forward to seeing some entries soon. So um, yeah, shall we shall we go inside and take a look? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, so we're in the Leamington now, and uh, as you can see, it's a very traditional um, hallway. Uh, wow. We've got the staircase going off up here. Um, we've got, a, a, again, a traditional balustrade and handrail. All the principal rooms come off here. We've got a very tall um, doors, which it, it, all of our doors are taller than, the, than our peer group. And as you can see, we've got a, a storage down here so that uh, when you come in you can put your coats and shoes and all the things tidy. that come along. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and if you want to come through here... Yeah. Wow, the ceilings are so high. What we do do is that um, we've got tall ceilings, they're all higher than our peer group. We've got taller doors, taller windows and... Uh, taller skating boards as well. Yeah, good spot. <laughs> yeah, so as you can see we've got a, a bay window here, it's a two-storey bay window. It, it gives you a bit of additional floor space so that um, where, where you can uh, push your a chair or coffee table or whatever whatever back. Yeah, um, a question we do get asked a lot actually is why is there no TV in, in these front rooms? Well obviously a customer can put a TV in here as, as I'm sure you're aware but what we find is this is all very aspirational living. Um, we've got the fireplace in here, we've got this set up so yeah. people are, it, it's, it's their posh lounge, you know, their gin room where, where they can yeah. come and people can come and relax. Yeah, so. lovely. Okay, shall we go and have a look uh, through at the... Uh, other space. Yep. Wow, so much space and lots of light flooding in. Yeah, so this is our open plan kitchen dining with family area. So this is what customers are looking for in their home. So to be open plan, have all of this open space that you say, like you say, with the light as well. Mm. Um, it's definitely something they are looking for more and more in the home to have the open plan. Yeah, this is this is really the hub of the home. So we've got a, a, a good sized kitchen, eating area, dining room, and uh, obviously we've got the uh, the family area down here. And, and the TV as well. And the TV, yeah, as you, you, you mentioned before. So there's there's additional storage in here. So there's there's plenty of storage for the customer. And, yeah, and then uh, through here we have the utility. So you can have your washing machine and tumble dryer hidden away. So for noise, you can have it completely separate as well with extra storage again. As you can see, we've got a great big patio uh, door there, or a bifold. It opens out and it links, oh. obviously, the inside to the outside yeah. space. So, great, great place to uh, to be. So, Stuart, a common question that we see on social media near enough every day is customers questioning how you actually get into a garage like this in terms of driving your car in. You're referring to the grass. To the grass. To the yeah, grass. yeah. I mean, quite often as well, we we, we do landscape uh, across the front of the garage yeah. door and put plants there. But um, it is only done. We're in a, a sales area now, in a, in a sales environment, yeah. uh, and it is done for the sort of the, the the aesthetic of the sales area. It isn't it, it isn't done for any sort of practical reason. So um, before customers move in, all this will be cleared off. There's probably the paviors already underneath okay. here then we've we've just grassed over the top of it so no need for any flying cars or or, or four-wheel drive no four -wheel no, drive? You, no. You'll, you'll have full access and uh, right. you'll have a drive as normal perfect great okay what a grand entrance Stuart talk me talk me through this okay so this is Larger, it's a larger house, so it's got a, a larger hall than the uh, the previous house type, the Leamington. Mm -hmm. And as you can see here, the the, the feature of the of the hall yeah. is is the staircase. So double newels, double handrail, and uh, a bull nose bottom tread. So the whole thing looks looks nice yeah. and inviting. It just gives it that homey feel as well. And as before, we've got all the main rooms off off this area. Mm -hmm. We've got sort of Lots of storage spaces, so there's two additional stores wow. at either end of the hall. Lots, lots of storage for that. So you'll notice that we have the oak doors in this home as well. So to match the oak staircase, we have the oak doors, which customers love. 
Shall we uh, go through to the kitchen? Yeah. Yeah, great. Such a fantastic island. I love this. And I absolutely just love how much light is just flourishing in. It's amazing. Yeah, it's a lovely light space, this or space is. Uh, we've got sort of uh, large windows, or, or obviously a large window, and then at either end there's a, there's a further uh, patio or French, French door, so the whole space is all lovely and well lit. So the island's very aspirational and customers love them. Yeah. I mean, um, this, the layout of this kitchen is slightly different to the Leamington. We've got the three different sections, if you could... Yeah. You know, elaborate on those for me. Yeah, well, we've got three very distinctive areas. Obviously, the kitchen, hub of the home again, yeah. in, the, in the middle. We've got the dining at the one end and then the family room at the other. Mm -hmm. um, but there's no reason why, you know, you, you couldn't do different things with those spaces. Great. And would you say, Emily, um, customers tend to adapt to the various purposes of these areas? Or? Yeah, definitely. I think customers love the open plan, but then they also like having it slightly separate. Mm -hmm. If they wanted the dining area in that room, they can have that, mm -hmm. um, as long as it suits their needs. They love it as well because we do have the walls here, so it's an additional bit of privacy for them. Um, so it does really have everything they are looking for. Yeah, it's totally flexible, so um, you could have... Um, you could perch yourself on the end of the... Uh, of the island, you can have the kids sitting in there having their breakfast yeah. or in there watching the television. It, it, you, you've got sort of total flexible living with this. And um, I couldn't help but notice we've got a little utility room just tucked away in there as well. Yeah, well, it's not quite so little, that one. <laughs> um, but again, it, it, it is. It's keeping yeah. all of that sort of noisy um, machinery out of, the, out of the living space. But that's, you know, it's a good size and it's got sort of additional storage in there as well. So all that's left to say is thanks to my guests for joining me today. Don't forget, our Recreate Vedro competition ends on the 27th of August. So head over to vedro.co.uk forward slash Recreate Vedro to find out all the details on how to enter. You can also actually enter through our social channels just by tagging us with the hashtag Recreate Vedro competition. Our next episode is all about how to build a city from scratch. So make sure you tune in, like and subscribe. Thanks again for watching and listening.